Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you tell the audience uh, what we're going to be uh, talking about today? Yeah, you know what? I was going to surprise you. I've actually bought some new glasses because these ones are getting a bit old, and I wanted your live take of what they look like. I, I don't okay, know let's if they're see as them. good as yours. All right, I found them. Okay, bear with me. Um, no, I found the box. I found them. Okay. Glasses coming off. New ones coming on. I want you to tell me the absolute truth, okay? On. Now, what are you thinking? I like the old ones better. <laughs> I'm joking. You know. Oh. No. Oh. No, they're My good. Heart broke. They're, good. Like, they're actually they're very close to mine, actually. They're not I think bad. they're a little bit big, but what can you do? It's, you know, 20 bucks. Who cares? So anyway, for the people listening uh, listening and not watching, that was a whole waste of your time. But what we're going to talk about today is if you're a founder, if you're wanting to start a company in the future, how do you go about getting capital? And I mean, in any sense of the word, it, it doesn't just mean raising seed rounds. It doesn't just mean PE money. It doesn't just mean asking your parents and your friends for cash to even start. So what are all of the types that you know of, Sean? Well, there's, there's many different ways. You mentioned a few. There. So there's many different ways to actually raise the capital. There's one, you know, you go to family. and you well, First, you can you can just bootstrap. Second, you have family and friends. Okay. Now, third, you can go the VC route, which, you know, as everyone knows over the last few years, um, is not uh, throwing money around like it did in, in 2020, 2021. The other way is there's 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 crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, um, Kickstarter. There's different ways to get your business off the ground. Um, besides that, I know what we did at AutoClose. We started out with Product Hunt, and then we did uh, um, with not with Product Hunt, sorry, with uh, AppSumo, sorry, uh, AppSumo, where we got our first initial clients. We got some revenue, uh, and we helped kind of build the product from there. Um, you know, and there's also different aspects you can go there's a lot of grants and stuff governments give um that's one thing that i didn't do and i just because i was so head down trying to grow the company but there's a lot and i, I just heard yesterday uh, from a good friend of mine who's who's in the middle of uh, you know growing a company he was at saster and he was telling me that google is giving fifty thousand dollars to startups with that have a more women to men ratio in their company so there's many different ways um, to do it. But those are just a few of the ways. But uh, nowadays, it's you got to get capital somewhere. Um, just to give you guys a little headwind. When I started my first company in 2014, the salaries in Europe, etc. Um, are now four times the cost they were back then. So just imagine if you're trying to bootstrap, you now have to have four times the amount of money to just break even. So those was what I would start with, uh, Ollie. Yeah, so um, a couple that you mentioned, I'm going to question um, what are some of the contingencies for it. So, for instance, the crowdfunding, yeah. um, you've got to have, well, is it as simple as this? So, so take um, Kickstarter, I think is like one of the yeah. bigger ones. You can't just put anything up on there and it starts to give you a hell load of money. Like that's just not how it is. It has to obviously be a great product. It has to be a great problem and lots of things like that. But if you're not a person blessed with a great Rolodex and a big network. Does it work the same? Because I think that is a big part of, you know, if I want to raise capital among my friends and peers, I don't really have lots of people who are in this space who would get it and have cash to do it. So that would impact me and I would go elsewhere. But does that work for like a Kickstarter, for example, as well? It, it, well first off, for, it doesn't really work for a Kickstarter. So I'm not too familiar. I, I know with Kickstarter, I believe you put a product up and then, for people initially investing, they would get early access and some some sort of product before anyone else. It's more sales, isn't it? That it's kind of like a product hunt. Yeah. I guess you're getting a deal to to bring it to life, sort of. But it's yeah. it's still pre pre actually execution, isn't it? Yeah. So there, there's there, that, but but what you did mention was an interesting one. You know, you know, if you don't have a big Rolodex and network, how do you raise money? If you want to go, for example, family and friends or anything like that, I'll tell you what you do. You bring on a few people. You give them one percent advisor shares and you look at people and you only pick two people that have a big network because now you get introduced to their network. You've given them 1% of your company as advisory shares and you have them come on and you're using their network. So that's one way to do it. Now, if it's your second, if you've already been through one acquisition and you're going into your second, it gets even easier because what you also want to do is you might not want to have that network. You also might want to just have somebody that's been there, done that. Meaning 
Um, I know, for example, you know, uh, and, and I haven't tried it, but, you know, for example, having a few acquisitions under my belt now, 2023, if I want to start something 2024, 2025, or whatever that might be, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for me to raise money because I can prove that, hey, listen, I took $12,000 and built a company out of $12,000 and grew it over three years. This is where we went. We had a successful exit. So you can kind of show. And from them, the, their perspective is they're giving the capital. But the first thing an investor is looking at is you and the team, right? They want to make sure, A, can that person do it? But when you've already done it before, they don't have to look at can you do it. It's like, okay, we know they can do it. They've done it before. Him and the same developer did it before. Him and the same marketing person did it before. I trust them. And that gets that makes it a lot easier to raise money. Yeah, okay. So let's um let's bench that aspect of it for a second because I want to get back to that in kind of a, a second half. So let let's finish up and tie up the um you're a scrappy first timer. Yeah. You don't have the track record to do that because that that then lends itself to VC, PE, yeah, yeah. other routes. But you're a scrappy, you're first timer, maybe you have the network, maybe you don't. So you have that decision. Then what else is there? So there's kind of seed, but and seed is kind of like baby VC in my opinion. How do you go about, let's say, let's say me, I have an okay network for people who I might be able to work with. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, depends on the product and what I'm asking. Let's say I need a bit more money. How would I go to seed? I, to be honest, I wouldn't even know how to start. I understand it, but I wouldn't know how does this actually come to fruition process wise. So, I mean, if you just need a little bit more money, you might not want to even go to seed. I mean, if you're not going to get that network, I mean, you can probably go to a bank. Right. You could just, you could just walk into a bank. I mean, you can, you know, depends on where you are. You could have a home line credit, like use your home line. There's different things you could do if you need a little bit of money. But if you need money, the, the, the only thing that I, I find is a lot of people go to VCs thinking because they want the capital. If I'm going to VCs, I'm not going for the capital. I'm going for those relationships. That's what I'm going for. Cause the capital you can get, you can take out money. You can get a loan. You can go to third parties and ask for a loan, pay interest on your money, pay them back. There's different, I think, uh, I, I, there's another company out there that kind of gives you, gives you money and then they take a certain percentage of your subscription, um, every month and you pay a little bit of interest. There's tons of ways to get money. But the, the most important thing is a first time start is you haven't been there, done that, you know, and, and there, you, you want to go from zero to one million is one way. One to 10 is one way. 10 to 50 is another way. So you want to make sure if you're in that zero to one or one to five, wherever you are, you're finding the right person, the right network that will help you get to the next level. How do you do that? You find the VCs that have been there. They have companies like that in their portfolio. And that's where you go for the capital. Don't just go to raise money just so you have money in your bank. Because a lot of the times, A, as a first-time founder, you're going to be um, cost cautious. You're not going to use your money properly. You're probably not going to invest enough money where the VCs can going to be like, hey, man, like, why do you have 36 months of runway? Keep 12 months of runway and spend the rest. Let's double down on what's working. Uh, and that's the kind of thing you get from VCs. PE firms and other um, third parties. Okay. So I think I get the flavor there. It's not so much the money, it's more the person, the skill, the experience, the network that comes with it. So is that a similar thing for angel investing? Is that kind of, I'm going to cherry pick out people who can bring me a a light core version of that, but do their own capital for it? So for me, angel investing, I'm looking for people that are going to give me money, but stay on the sidelines and leave me alone. Right? I want their money. They trust me. They want to invest in me, what I've done. But again, they don't have a seat at the table. They're not maybe even in the industry. You know, so like, for example, with, 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 you know, with auto clothes, I had, I had a ton of family and friends, parents who just came to me and said, Hey, what can I give you to get involved? What can I get? At that time, we didn't need it. But if I did need it, it'd be like, Hey, write me the check. You're invited to our quarterly board calls. Besides that, you don't hear the day to day stuff. I give you the numbers, the financials. I give you the strategy, but you are just a checkbook. Um, and that's how it is with most at the start angel investors. If you're obviously getting bigger and you're finding angel investors with experience, network, et cetera, then you might be different. But at the beginning, you know, if I'm a startup, I'm looking just for that check. Okay. So probably angel is right at the top of the scrappy first time way of doing things. It's right until you get bigger at the least to go any other route. So then let's flip a little bit. Let's say you're first, um, not a first time, but you're a second, third time and potentially You've got a record to say you can get to at least a certain level and you know exactly how you're going to do it. You've now got your new project, your new idea, platform tool, whatever. So you're picking either between presumably VC or private equity. Is there A, is there anything else? And B, which 
which has its uh, advantages and disadvantages, which would you lean at? It, it, it all depends on your company. There, there's advantages and there's disadvantages of, of both PE and VC, right? Uh, a VC is going to be down your neck to spend, spend, send, go for the home run or just, you know, sink or swim. A PE firm is going to be more calculated. What PE firms really want to do is they want to look at your numbers, lower your cost, increase your EBITDA, and get rid of you within three to five years. They're not looking to hold on to you. They're looking to three to five year horizon. They want to get you from, you know, usually P firms also don't want to go into that startup, right? They want to get to the mature company, 10, 25 million, 30 million, 40 million. But if you're at 50 million, the P firms are going to be like, okay, within five years, I want you at 250 million. And then I want to get rid of you. Because what's a PE firm's job? A PE firm's job is they have their portfolio, they have their fund, they have investors that are investing in their fund that want to return on their investment. So they have a three to five year horizon to get you that return on the investment and they sell you off sometimes to another PE firm, to a larger one, but they don't want to keep you more than three to five years, typically. Um, so there'll be that and then VC is a bit more of a seat at the table, but I, I'm imagining, tell me if this is fair or unfair, I'm imagining more volatile pressure because of the stock market-esque part of it. Yeah. It's a little bit more up and down. A VC firm is going, Ollie. Here's 10 million. In a year from now, you need to do a series A and raise 25 million. A year and a half from now, you have to raise a series B and raise 50 million. And guess what? A year and a half from then, you got to raise 100 million. Dilution, 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 growth, growth, growth. That's all they care about. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we kind of gave VC a bad rap there. So if you're a founder yeah. and this, this is kind of a good thing that you're looking for, Obviously, the cash injection allows you to do a plethora of things. Um, the PE firm sounds like a slower, more calculated, but still fairly quick route of doing that. So apart from speed, what is the main advantage of a, of a VC? Is there the same network effect, that type of thing too? Well, they have the network and stuff, but don't go. I'm not giving a VC a bad rep. Dilution, dilution, dude. You know what? It's, it's better to have 1% of a $150 million company than have 10% of a million dollar company, right? So you can have 10% and still dilute the 1%, but if the company is going to be doing 150 million, you're going to be making a lot more money. So by dilution and stuff, it's not, but their focus is growth. That's what their main focus is. They're not, their focus is not, you know, let's 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. No, let's go 60%, 60%, 60%. They're looking at growth and they're looking at spending. So they're not looking at, you know, initially at, are you profitable? They're looking at, you know, like look at Amazon. Amazon was never profitable. But they were valued at billions of dollars. That's what a VC firm comes into does. Hmm. Okay. So let's say I'm starting yep. a company tomorrow. I'm not everyone, just so you know. I would I wouldn't know where to start. Um, I'm starting a company. Which, what would you advise me to do? At my level, would I be family and friends? Would I be on Kickstarter? Would I be going to a VC? I know what I think it'd be, but what do you think? First thing I would do is bootstrap until you have some sort of revenue. Because when you have some sort of revenue, then the VCP anyway, or whoever you go to will be like, okay, well, they are revenue. They're starting to make money and they've proven the model, right? So you're going to get a better valuation at that point. If you're just an idea, you get, you get the, the valuation on your idea. So I would do that as long as you can. I would then go to, you know, family and friends, me personally, uh, if I could. And then once I want to get to the next stage, then you bring in VC, PE, whatever it might be at that point. But you want to bootstrap it as long as you can, um, just so that, A, you can keep as much cake as you can. But also, um, you know, you want to also have that runway for a little bit. But then, yeah, family, friends, try and get 18-month runway in cash in the bank. So, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not stressing about that. Because the last thing you want to be doing when you're growing a company is stressing about, can you open the lights and open the doors tomorrow? Turn the lights on and open the doors tomorrow, right? So that would be my recommendation. My first call is you then. Yo, Sean, I've got this sick idea, bro. It's going to be the next big thing. Like, you've got to get in now. It's going to be such a great deal. I can, I can see you saying, yeah, but someone's at my door. Or the, the oven's just pinged. I've left the fridge open. I've got to go right now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, no, I think, th I think this is very useful because I think a lot of people now, you know, I think the IPOs are starting to come back. I think tech is starting to make a little bit. Of, I don't think we're there yet, but it's starting to make a comeback. So I think a lot of these people will be coming out as the market turns. I think we're still going to have a, a bit of a stagnant year. But I think by end of 2024, you'll see uh, a lot of things happening in, in, the, in the SaaS space. 
Perfect. Well, I oh, anything last? Anything last to to say, Ollie? No, I think we'll do a couple more about this type of stuff. It's um, for instance, I didn't really know how you go about approaching some of these things. So I imagine a lot of people don't. If you're kind of anticipating it in your path in the next few years, so it'd be good to um, things like runway, like okay, sure, have a have the year yep. or something like that. But how much is too much? How much is too little? And so on. It's it'd be nice to get a sense of that. So we'll do we'll do more about this. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and this episode today. It's been an absolute blast. And thank you for everybody listening wherever you are in the world. If you enjoyed today's show, please don't forget to always give us that five-star review wherever you're listening from. Reach out if you want us to bring any additional guests on the show and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Thank you so much.